This is 12.5% Malamute, and this is 100% Malamute. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm taking a look at this Malamute Session IPA from Lord's Brewing, and I'm pretty excited about it, mainly because what well, it's called Malamute. I've never seen a beer called Malamute before, and as you can probably tell from my dog at the start, I am interested in all things sled dog related, so... Yeah, let's crack into it. I don't want to read too much on the can before I get into it, but simply Lord's Brewing Co. Malamute is 4.5% ABV, Session IPA, dry hopped with Bobek and Styrian, described as crisp. I've not knowingly had a beer with those hops in it before, I don't think, but I'm sure I probably have at some point. Now, before we get into it, here's a quick look at the can. Let's get started. <laughs> Bit of a fruity, piney note from a distance. Fairly rich. It's pale, but a bit rich in colour, and it's hazy. It's not properly thick hazy, but it's definitely got some cloud to it. Nice, almost two finger thick white head on there. Looks very appetizing, I think you'll agree. Right, let's see what the aromas are saying. Ooh, that's um, it's peachy. Getting a bit of the kind of typical IPA grassy, piney notes, but there's a sweetness lingering and it's not it's so tropical as, yeah, it seems peachy to me, huh? That's, um, I've not smelled a beer like that for a while. That's, that's a pretty good sign, that smells very appetizing. And also the peachiness with the haze, that mixes quite nicely as well. Right then, cheers. Hmm, that's a bit of a roller coaster. It's nice though. Wow, it's got a, a bit of everything going on in there. It's even like a, a bit of a wheat beer finish to it. Okay, let's run through this bit by bit. Firstly, mouthfeel. Initially feels a bit thin, but actually swallowing it, it feels a lot heavier than it actually is. So. That's pretty much a thumbs up. It is a session IPA. I wasn't expecting a great deal in the kind of creamy mouthfeel front, so it's probably batting slightly above its weight in that regard. Initial taste is not especially bitter, but not especially big flavour either. It's just a lingering, generic, maybe slightly citrusy, but really nothing blowing away on that initial taste. And then that middle section is where it kind of ramps up and you get a bit of the peachiness I was describing in the aromas, but to be honest, it's not strong in that regard. It's just a little kind of nod to that part. Then it goes piney and slightly bitter, but the bitterness is very, quite nice actually. It's not over the top in any way at all. And then to the finish, you start to get a bit of, it's a bit of a flavor and a sensation that I associate with kind of mass produced kind of wheat beers, white vice beers, kind of like that Ho Garden. Um, people describe it as dish soapy, but it's not as prominent in this, just a kind of a, a nod to that style when you swallow it, but it doesn't hang around very long like it does in those traditional brews. Right, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a damn fine brew. Let's have a look at the can description, see what we're meant to be experiencing right now. It says, Lord's Brewing Co. A simple pale malt bill gives a soft malt foundation, but lets the hops do most of the talking. Yeah, agree. There's no... Um, big malt flavours in there, but I suspect some of that mouthfeel is as a result of that. Magnum hops give a gentle bitterness while kettle additions and dry hopping with Bobek and Styrian Wolf hops. Ah, there's a Styrian Wolf, what they called it, Malamute, I wonder. Not that they are actually related, of course, but it's a kind of a regional thing going on there. Hops offer an intense aroma of sweet tropical fruits and complex aromas of mango and elderflower. That's interesting, mango and elderflower. I went peach, but sure. That combination versus peach, not entirely dissimilar, so sure, that's fine. It says beer, session IP, hazy and unfined, yeah. Brewed at Laws Brewing Company, Huddersfield, West Yorkshire. Ingredients of water, malted barley, malted wheat, contains gluten, yeast, bobek, and stearine hops. 4.5% drink fresh. Yeah, I think that's fine. I don't entirely disagree with that can. My initial reaction to say was 
pizza though, those aromas and that bit of flavour, but let's go back to it and see if that's changed their mind any. It's sweetening up a little bit now, it's been sat still, in the aromas that is. You could argue for mango now, but it really rem it reminds me of tinned peaches. That's really what I'm getting from it. Now it's been sat still for a bit and I've become accustomed to it, you start to get more of the kind of grassy, piney tasting notes on the back end. They're kind of the predominant ones at this point. The fruit part, peach, mango, whatever you want to call it, is still very much there, but it's just kind of coats its on for a second and then it gets swapped away by those kind of fresh leafy notes of the pine and that kind of thing. It's slightly grassy. But actually, the more I drink this and now it's not quite as cold as it was when it came out of the fridge, the mouthfeel is getting better actually. I'm really impressed with the mouthfeel on that. I'm drinking this way too quickly, so I'm going to leave the video there, I think. Final thoughts are, as with many IPAs I've reviewed recently, in the summer, that's going to be belting. I reviewed their Silver Spur by the time this comes out a week or so ago. Um, that was good. This is better. That's just my take on it. That's I prefer this style. It's very nice. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you will know that I'm pretty picky when it comes to pale beers, and this one, I'm not offended in by any way. Which is a big thumbs up to Lord's Brewing Co, because, I mean, thank you for making a pale I can rely on, because this is really quite delicious. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it if you haven't already. Subscribe if you will be so kind, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.